uh, we have Lokesh uh, from Cadence Design Systems. Uh, Lokesh has presented at TV Club before and is a very well-known industry personality. Lokesh is the AE Group Director for uh, the System Verification Group at Cadence and uh, he'll be presenting uh, about navigating the verification complexity with Cadence uh, AIML. Lokesh is an astute uh, design and verification lead with uh, an unmatched prowess in project management skills, EDA, SAIC, IP, SOC, front-end design, um, ABV, low-power, formal verification, emulation, and automotive functional safety. Um, he's an expert in identifying process improvements and IEC verification with experience in front-end, um, and he has exposure to planning and execution of multiple cross-culture projects and programs, leading both local and virtual teams. Um, Lokesh is very adept at optimal utilization of teams, uh, processes, and technology, and combines uh, client-focused mindset with strong technical acumen to achieve timely delivery of high-quality products and services. Thank you, Lokesh, for your time. We look forward to your presentation. John, this is quite a long bio, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. While we connect to the presentation, uh, thank you, Jagdish. I think it's a good presentation. Uh, now, I just want to recap two bullets that uh, from Jagdish, right? One, he clearly mentioned that journey of AML is uh, not just somebody can go and learn overnight or start applying from, from the next, next day onwards, right? More of a good example, he quoted as teacher and student, right? So the student will be brilliant if the teacher can put effort in terms of coaching, right? The learning part is not efficient, then the result is not efficient, right? So I'm sure there are a lot of data is available in the market today uh, to try and uh, the available uh, chart boards or available missions that they can be efficient in terms of technology. For example, today, you want to train a, a mission to recognize whether it's a human versus a object versus a, uh, animal versus a moving vehicle. Right? This is a good algorithms are available to recognize that, right? And definitely we are trying to leverage some of this available LLMs and uh, technology in the EDS space to help to optimize in terms of turnaround time for verification, debug, regression. You name it, a lot of challenges that we do from spec to silicon, right? We start with the specification, article coding, verification, implementation, timing, period generation, a lot of steps are involved, right? Today. Yeah, if you look at uh, we closely spend a, a year if somebody's starting a chip from the scratch. I mean, I don't think anybody can tap out a chip within a quarter, right? I, mean, I know there's some derivatives that can be done or somebody doing IP subsystem that can be done, but if you really want to launch a chip from the architecture to a silicon, you just need more than 12 to 15 months, right? So idea is use leverage some of these AML techniques uh, and see how do we help ecosystem to cut down effort and time taken to meet your expectation, right? Again, one is optimizing productivity. The second part of it is, okay, uh, uh, I mean, today, a chip are designed for mobile or server. There's a problem, what you will do? You can always go back and reboot, or you can go and replace that with a new mobile phone, right? But imagine there's a chip is going to automotive, there's a chip going to satellite, there's a chip going to industrial. There's a malfunction is happening. What is the problem there? What is the challenge there? It can actually impact the life, right? It can actually impact overall generation of people that are going to use it, right? The severity of the impact is very huge, right? I mean, missing out on any bug, the whole system for automotive or space can cost you a lot, unlike a mobile that you can throw it and buy another phone, right? So finding a bug, or ensuring there is no bug in the design is becoming much more critical as you move towards some of the sensitive domain, right? So I think our motive is to see help improve the productivity at the same time, try to avoid some of those situations where we might run into some challenges down the line, right? Uh, so that, I mean, if you can save some lives by doing a better product, or product better design, that, that can give, give much more satisfaction to the human life, right? So with that, I'll get started, uh, right? Uh, hopefully, uh, I will try to give some insights into the uh, AIML journey at Cadence. 
again uh, jagdish mentioned that eda eda is adding features but there is no differentiation hopefully post my presentation you will you will get convinced that we do have differentiation and uh, definitely will engage with us to try some of this new features what we have right so again this is a journey we started uh, uh, a couple of years back and it's evolving right um, uh, if you have attended cadence live event last year there was a quick summary of what is the journey been done so far and uh, what is the outcome of the result right so i'm going to double click on some of those data and uh, also we have definitely added a lot more features in last uh, year or so right and you might keep hearing about this data in different forums wherever we talk about cadence right again my story primarily focus on design verification definitely aml is beyond design verification right we are trying to leverage wherever possible in our journey right so let's get started uh until we cannot okay so typically right so as a human uh, we always resist for any change like we don't really welcome any new change that comes in your life right we always ask a lot of hundred questions we try to fight back saying that no this is not right approach to us that right so i know so when there was a calculator was introduced way back right so a lot of fight happened a lot of strikes happened by mathematical teachers on the ground right so have you heard have you seen this lot of whatsapp messages or lot of social media messages right you know I mean, people came onto the people came onto the road and started striking that we don't want anybody to make calculators because if you make calculators our life becomes I mean, we won't be useful to teach math. Right? So, but that, it's not true, right? I mean, obviously, math has a different meaning altogether. Right? It's not just about addition, subtraction, or doing integration, right? So, same way I see when we deduce or when the ecosystem deduces chart GPT, a lot of negativity came. Right? So, what happens to our jobs? What's up? What's up into our lives? Right? So, I think there's a lot of negativity. But I, when I look back, or uh, when I look forward into the future i think i see the lot of redundancy can be cut down with the chat gpt or any kind of ai algorithms or uh, technology what we have right so the the way i believe i think ai ml is here is it is it true it's going to live with us it's going to take journey along with us right i think we need to live with the technology and understand how do we appreciate ourselves beyond what we're doing today right today you might be doing a regression overnight maybe you're spending 10 resources to do a, a block but possible that aml can cut down the 10 resources five resources but what happens with the remaining five people i think we need to be smarter to find a reason where we can add more value right there's no point in okay i'll slog over the weekend and run a regression open 10 files and uh, look for a, a matching uh, error message and then report my manager right maybe we not be required that we need to be smart in terms of finding out a right reason for us to add a value right so i mean i just want to sh share small uh, experience with my kids right i mean uh, i know most of the kids you know uh, how it is they using chat gpt to generate reports or, uh, or assignments right so i think i was having a very interesting in interaction with my son who's in 11th standard now he said uh, so that now aml is there to really read physics math chemistry right so anyway it's been already there available in the chat gpt you can give me any, any answer so i was a little surprised and i was finding it difficult to answer the question but i went back and told him that okay see uh, the god is created all of us that right? we have that intelligence to decide what to do how to do things but at the end of the day you are getting created and getting decided right so somebody is controlling you right so the knowledge what you have is always limited tomorrow if you really want to control ai ml you need to be a creator you need to be a destroyer maybe you need to control that if you really want to have that skill set you need to be understand this basic right otherwise decade down the line ai ml will control you then you will become a slave for them right you really want to become a slave you want to become a master you decide right if you want to become a master be better prepare all the physics chemistry math be right with yourself subject so that you can create ai ml chat boards and you can control what you want it right so i think it's an interesting journey i think we should all encourage uh, appreciate what is happening around us than negatively pushing back saying that it's not right for me right so with that i'll get started let's see okay 
So let's see what what we're cooking at Cadence and what we're trying to teach our machines or uh, EDA tools to be more efficient in terms of what we're doing at Cadence. Right? So let's get started. So again, the thought process within the Cadence, right? So what we believe, right? so we're trying to definitely help ecosystem, right? We're not looking at a way to replace certain things, right? So if you look at design or verification as a multiple component of it, right? So one is definitely, we, uh, uh, there are a lot of intuitions that need to be applied, right? Today, whatever you do, regression, whatever the test case you write, then the end of the day, your intuition has to tell that your design is bug free, right? So there is no guarantee that you have bug in your design, right? Whether you write functional coverage, code coverage, if you run long emulation or software test case, you might find some bug, but whether can I call out some techniques by using certain things? No. Right? So I think there's a lot of intuition that we apply, a lot of confidence that we apply that cannot be taken out, right? But there are certain tests that can be automated based on the data that we have available, right? For example, can I say that by when I can reach 100% coverage? Yes, maybe, because you have some history, you have some data, you have some complexity, you have some gate count size, I can predict, right? So I think, I believe there's a way that EDA can bridge between that the data which is available, right? And definitely the intuition that we can apply, right? So wherever the less intuition, but it's all data driven, that can be easily automated, right? Where the AML can help us. But wherever there's a huge intuition, where the manual judgment is required, I don't think AML is capable today to take that. Right? That's where human can play important role. The five people that we cut down, we see that can really go towards that, right? Applying some of those learning on the design verification or any other uh, design process, right? So we'll look at the next subsequent slides in terms of how EDA is trying to accelerate keeping human in the loop overall automation. It's not that we think that we, we don't really need a human, but definitely human is real needed in terms of taking a final judgment. So this is a slide talks about overall breadth and uh, depth of the tools that we offer at Cadence for the verification point of view, right? I mean, we have very well industrial to one core engine starting from formal, which is Jasper, actually into simulation, helium for virtual prototyping. We have emulator, palladium, uh, right? Then we have protein for prototyping, right? So there's been industry proven for quite some time and people have been verifying designs and taking out the designs, right? On top of that, we do have a platform called VeriCM, which is primarily focused on the uh, debug process, right? Or in terms of uh, optimizing your overall scope of verification. Right? So that's where we see a lot more opportunity for us to automate and bring in AI ML in terms of cutting down verification. So I think today I'm going to touch areas, some of these areas where we have been trying to introduce AI ML capabilities to optimize your run times, debug times, analysis times, right? And save your time in terms of meeting your goals. So before that, right? So when our uh, president, Anurudh Devgan, I mean, when he took over uh, CEO role a couple of years back, and he comes with a lot of R&D background, he's not a sales guy, he's a pure R&D guy. So he, he started thinking that, okay, guys, we have so many tools in the cadence, right? And every tool such as RTL, at least in a different format, right? I see there is potential opportunity for us to learn from each other, right? I mean, synthesis tool will read RTL, simulation tool will read RTL, simulation will read RTL. Can I leverage each other in terms of how we interpret it now, right? So that I can minimize the mistake that I do in terms of putting the results to the customer, right? So that's where the idea came called uh, ZAI, which is a giant enterprise data platform, a platform, uh, which is a common platform for all cadence tools that going to produce a common database can be leveraged by each and every tool to support this platform. Right? So this just started a year back. Not every tool is supporting this database generation, but I think certain tools are generating this database, which can be leveraged across the different platforms to optimize their turnaround time. Right. I'll give some examples here of the time to use that. So as you can see here, when you start a chip design, we always have high level goals, 
right? So, like for example, I say the best CPU. I need to have better performance, better power, better area. Right? The same time, I want to see bug free fully fast, right? And definitely, you want to make sure that you want to be first in the market, right? Or maybe have use all the latest and greatest interfaces like USB 4, Gen 3, all of that. Right? So a lot of goals that you have, right? So keeping that in mind, definitely you have a DVT, synthesis team, implementing, everybody is doing different tools here, right? So idea is, okay, it's not a one-day effort, a two-day effort. It's going to be a multiple iteration, right? You have a different stages of RTL coming in, different stages of this coming in. A lot of iterations happen, the so same design, same logic getting simulated or uh, synthesized multiple times. So what we believe, I think first iteration, data can be utilized for a second session data. You not to be 100%, but even 10% of the data can be leveraged to optimize my second run, and third run, fourth run. Definitely, my PPA can be much better, or my simulation time results can be much better, right? and overall predictability of my completeness can be much better. So that is the thought process here. Right. So as you can see in this slide, uh, most of the tools will start supporting JDI flat uh, database generation, which is a, a common database. Uh, again, whether this database will be uh, specific to customers, specific to cadence, yes. I mean, typically when our end customers start using our tools, the database becomes their own popular. Not that cadence is going to leverage the data, right? But they can leverage their own data based on their chips, what they're doing. Let's like somebody is doing the mobile mobile chip, somebody is doing server chip or automotive. The data is specific to their program. Right? So now they can leverage the same data to optimize the upcoming revisions or take out to be more efficient. Right? So that's the idea here. I mean, how much the data can be put into the common uh, uh, community, I mean that all specific to each and every customer because Intel doesn't want to take their data outside anybody. Maybe a Qualcomm or maybe Samsung. Everybody has their own operator, right? So I'm not seeing any uh, uh, way that we can get the data out. But I think I'm sure I, we want to help individually their own uh, end customer to ensure that they have productive in their own chips. Right? We can see how maybe down indicate down the line there will be common way to extract this data to the larger community. Right? So, but at, at this point of time, most of the learning will happen to the specific to the domain, specific to the customer. So this, this is a slide to give you a little big, big picture in terms of what is our motivation, right? I mean, uh, as you can see here, the data is collecting collected here, uh, right? So from the different tools, different analysis, then definitely we will take the data into the different optimizing of our next set of funds. And also people can build their own third-party elements to optimize. For example, if I'm doing PNR, right? Uh, there's a lot of critical timings or multi-cycle path timings are available in my design. Can I do a lot of analysis on that so that next time onwards, I can give the feedback to design team to avoid such kind of multi-cycle path. Okay. So there are a lot of things can be built on top of this database early, and that can save a lot of your iterations or kind of cases when you do the next season. So this is going to be a game changer from the cadence perspective, right? And um, it can bring in more stickiness in terms of how we want to use across the different tools, right? Yeah, definitely uh, we might find a way to uh, combine multiple EDA vendors, but today focus is to across cadence tools. How do we optimize ourselves to improve the productivity? Let's skip this. So I think now, so far I've given you the insights. What is our motivation? Where you want to travel towards the uh, making your designs to be more efficient. Right? So now I'm going to talk about the technologies which are available, which you can right away start using it in terms of your verification design, right? So here I'm going to talk about the platform Verisium, which is the top ribbon. It talks about uh, management of verification, finding a bug, uh, debug, right? So I'm going to talk about some of the features which are available part of AML offering, which can help you to speed up your overall process. So typically, when you start doing verification, right? So these are typical basic steps, right? We start building and compile, elaborate your design, right? Just bench, right? Then you start running. It can be simulation, it can be formal, it can be emulation, right? So post that, you will have a data. It can be coverage, it can be failure that need to be analyzed and used. So these are basic steps where we typically operate, right? So 
I, we see opportunity in each and every step where we can automate certain things, certain process, right? For example, here, while building, I know the building starts from the fake RTL generation and having some smoke. Right? Can I do some kind of pseudo RTL generation from spec? Or can I do some kind of auto check from spec? Obviously, there's a good talk. Right? Similarly, while doing the run, I think Jagdish mentioned about he running a lot of similar in terms of uh, to uh, collect a lot of functional coverage, code coverage, right? Do I need to run all the code or the possible random stimulus, right? You might be generating today 10,000 random seeds or maybe 20,000 random seeds to hit all possible scenarios, right? But do I need to really run all the 20,000, 30,000 seeds? Uh, similarly, uh, uh, in, when it comes to resources optimization, right? You have 10 core CPUs, 20 core CPUs, okay? You ran a uh, revision one, so you, you have to utilize all the 20 core CPUs. Can I learn out of that and optimize it only for 10 core CPUs? Yes, there's a potential possibility. So that can be run here right, using ML techniques. And during the process of uh, debug, I think this is where we spend a lot of time, right? So as, as you can see here, right? When, once you root cause a problem, you just need a 1% to fix the RTLC. But to root cause the problem, you need 30, 40 people depending on the complexity of problem. So there's a lot more opportunity for us to optimize and automate here. So we'll talk about features which are available. So these are I'm highlighting some features which are available already, which are helping uh, our end customers, and we have already seen uh, very good results. And the build phase, I think uh, uh, we have tools called uh, Chart VAP and uh, Tech Minus. Chart VAP is primarily meant for can I integrate my VAP out of, out of the box? That you have USB 4, PCI Gen 3. Today you might be spending good amount of time to integrate VAP and get a smoke running, right? What, what, why are you spending so much of time there, right? So we are trying to automate the whole process right? because if you are using Cadence VAP, if you are using Cadence Design tools, you can all automatically automate that. Similarly, we'll talk about some of this CMAI, right? There are very good technologies that are available. I'll talk about one by one. Next slide. So I think. The features what, which I shown in the previous slide, I just put together in terms of how they exist here, the whole platform, right? As you can see here, which are in the green, all available for production right now, all our customers are using, right? which are AML enabled. The one which are in blue, which are primarily available for relay access, we are doing some experiments and trials to take some feedback and data to improvise. And uh, the one which are in the green color, which are still in development, right? we are also working with initial Customer to enable proof of concept here, right? But I'll talk about the one which are production been available. But if you are interested in other features, also do let me know. We can always discuss on these. So let's look at uh, the first one here. Uh, as you can see here, uh, typically what's happened, uh, right? So we always have multiple releases of design, or maybe uh, same block or same design, right? So one of the basic advantages here, basic value that we are trying to bring in here, let's say I have from the revision N to revision N plus one. It can be IP, subsystem, SOC. Quite possible that your regression failed. Quite possible that your tests are starting failing, or maybe totally your results, coverage totally went down, practically from the what you had earlier, right? So how do I find, how do I root cause some of those issues here, right? So one, uh, in terms of formal, Right, for example, here, the very high level, let's say I verified some blocks using formal here, but I did a small change, fix maybe added some flop, added some logic here. I'll start running formal. Can the formal leverage existing previous run to speed the performance? Let's say I spent one hour to prove all my 20 properties earlier. Can I convert same 20 properties in five minutes? Yes, possible. Right, so that's where we use concept called proof mastering. We'll talk about that in detail. Uh, similarly, if you look at, we have technology called Velcium uh, CMAI. So this is a technology primarily meant for optimizing your regression, optimizing your uh, root causing of failure, or optimizing your failure analysis much more faster. Right? Let me go into details here. Let's look at one by one here. So this slide talks about uh, AI ML techniques which are available in our simulator. Right? Let me start with this. The first one which is very low hanging called regression compression, right? Let's say I have a code coverage of 90% gain fit and functional coverage of maybe 92% and I'm running 30,000 test cases. 
and 30,000 test cases are taking maybe a week long to pick the same coverage number. Right? Every small change, you need to spend a week long to ensure that that is not breaking. With this technology, what happens? Okay, you say that, okay, this is a design, this is a coverage database, this is a test suite. Right? Now this ML technology goes back. You run as it is your regulation for a week long. We learn out of that. And I'll come back to you saying that, okay, you're hit 90% code coverage, okay, 92% code functional coverage. I'll give you out of this 10,000 test cases, maybe 30,000 test cases, I'll give you 5,000 test cases, very good test cases, but you might hit only 90% of code coverage and functional coverage. There's a drop of 2% functional coverage. Are you okay? So you got exact compression of maybe 4x. And 4x less number of test cases, 4x less number of your resources, and definitely you, you might finish the 5k test case within a day. Don't need to wait for a week long. So ML can optimize your compression or optimize your regression throughput to get you the better turnaround time. And you might say that, you know, I don't want to drop my coverage. I want to give me the same 100% recovery. Tool can go back again and come back to you. Okay, instead of 5,000, you run 8,000 test cases now. But you can get 100% code, code coverage recovered, 100% functional coverage recovered, but you are optimized. This is a very low hanging technology available and a lot of our customers are using it, right? It's pretty useful. Let's say you taped out a previous design with a 100K test cases. You optimize the test suit and have a test suit ready. Next time when you have small change, you just run only those set of test cases to ensure that no bug being released. Right? It becomes quicker to analyze your coverage, quicker to report back to design team, yeah, there's a failure bug, go and fix it. Don't need to wait for a week long. Right? So very powerful, it's really low hanging. A lot of our customers are finding a value. If you have SVUVM based randomized test bench where you're randomizing 10 speeds, 10 test cases, 1,000 times, it can come back to you with a much more productive test list. And other uh, area where we're trying to do the coverage is maximization. As uh, uh, earlier presenter mentioned about, okay, hitting certain space is very challenging, right? Going to that space is takes a lot of time consumption, right? So we are trying to use this ML and AI techniques here trying to tweak the constraints what you have, the environment what you have to go to those other cases to hit those coverage things which are very complex or time consuming to hit, right? So this has been introduced last year and we have seen a good results coming out here. Again, it's pretty much tied to your test bench, how you, you written, right? So there's a better suggestion guidelines being given out how to make better ROI out of this technology, right? So other area we are trying to do is uh, uh, bug hunting. Again, intent is to try to hit as much possible as corner, uh, corner cases in the design, right? So as you can see here, the first bar, you have only two bugs that have been hit by your same environment, but using this ML technique, we can uncover more bugs because we're trying to hit all possible scenarios in your design, right? It's like a bringing some concept of formal into the simulation. It can cover, uncover more bugs and much more faster with the less number of stimulus. So other technique called uh, soak testing. This is an interesting area, right? Let's say uh, you got a new RTL and uh, you, got, you ran a regression. There's a lot of failures happen. You debug and analyze that. Yeah, this specific block has been reported a lot many bugs. You fixed it, right? So next time you got the same release design, right? And you always have a suspicion that, yeah, this block is can always culprit for me, right? I, instead of running all 100K test cases, let's focus on this block and make sure that regression is clean on this block, right? That's where you can say that, okay, can you target this block in my regression? And try to make sure that it's clean. Like a, throwing a dot, right? So you're trying to exercise this block alone in the context of full test bench and trying to make sure that there is no bug lying here. Because there's no point in running the complete regression, there's a bug here. Okay. So this is a newly introduced technology. Again, customers started using it and they're finding value out of it. And other technology called uh, uh, autofocus. So autofocus is more similar in sense of what was uh, mentioned about uh, soaking, soak testing, right? So let's say I already have a 20K test cases. And I want to get a create a test list which are focused on a specific set of IPs or blocks. So 
so that I can just run only those test cases early before I launch my complete regression. Right. So here, autofocus can help you to identify those test cases which are really creating an impact in those IPs. In this case, for example, identified module one, module two to be focused. It can come back to you out of this test list, thousand test list. You can say these are, these are only five, six test lists that you need really to hit those modules. So this way, you can always focus a specific test list. It can optimize in terms of your overall debug time or other uh, other iterations. So so far, we have seen how a simulator can help you to optimize your simulation, right, or optimize your regression, right. So let's now look at how do we optimize your debug time. Right. So as I mentioned in the uh, beginning, see, once you know the bug, you just need a one percent to fix the problem. But to uncover this bug, to root cause this bug, you need definitely more number of people. Right. So we're trying to see how do we squeeze this to the left shift with our technology. So there are a couple of new features been announced. It's all I think Virisium been in the market for more than a uh, uh, two years now, and this feature has been available, uh, and a lot of our customers are using it. Nothing new. It's already using it. Right? One is start with the auto triage. So auto triage is let's say imagine you're running a regression again, right? So 10,000 test cases. And out of the 10,000 test cases, you have 5,000 test cases failed. You don't know where to start, right? It's a big C now, right? So you should start with the test case one, two, three, right? So auto triage will help you to bucketize your failures based on certain specific signature. Let's say if you want to say that okay, all my CPU test cases need to be debugged first. Or all my assertion failures need to be debugged first. Or this is a reset failure test case need to be debugged first. Right? You can coach one time. The next time onwards, it will learn from your data provided and start bucketizing your test cases based on that information provided. Right? It will help you to identify the area where you want to start analyzing it. Right? The second one is a pin down. It's also an interesting app. So let's say. There's a failure in the test cases, right? And you want to ensure that the failure is happening because of this file change. So what happens in pin down? Tool will trace back to the source code where exactly change happened. We'll try to fix that code change and rerun the same test case and confirm whether the test passes with the code change or not. The code change resulting test pass, then will come back to you saying that okay, this is a potential bug that's been introduced by designer so or so and so. Which is resulting in this many test cases failing. Right. The third one, which is a wave miner, and the fourth one is a port miner, pretty much goes in hand in hand. So, wave miner is something like, let's say you have a golden waveform, maybe uh, the previous release, the test is passing, the current release test is failing. Right? Now, you want to find where is the culprit, who is the, which signal is really misbehaving. Right? The wave miner can pinpoint you exactly in your whole design. You might have millions of signals. You come back to you, okay, these are five signals I see can culprit of your test failing. Now you can go and focus on these five signals. Right? The code miner will primarily, you can think of very layman terms of diff between the golden RTL versus modified RTL. Right? But there's a lot of heuristics that we apply to root cause a specific code change. Right? You come back to you, okay, this is a line change that you sort of earned or you added maybe additional signal here that resulted actually a test case failure. Right? So it's a very beautiful uh, uh, GUI comes up. So as you can see here, this auto triage GUI. It shows up. So these are original regression failures that you have seen. It's very confusing to debug way to start. But with auto triage GUI, it will bucketize all your failures. You can get started from the priority what you defined for your chip. Let me see this pin down here shows a little bit more graphical way, right? So as I said, right, so this is a technology which can go back and modify the RTL code and come back to you whether the fix can be cleaning your test case or not, right? And it also indi can indicate severity of the, uh, the code change, what is it doing. Right? So these are wave minor snapshots. I mean, as I said, right, so primarily it takes your failing waveform and passing waveform. It compares and it has a lot of built-in formal techniques. Right, not just a comparing to waveform, but it will try to do unrolling of the waveforms and the source code. We we'll come back to exactly which piece of signals are causing the difference. Right, you can see here 
beautiful GUIs that will be available for you to showcase both gold and versus the modified art here. Right. So this is a gold miner screenshot. I mean, as you can see here, it's clearly pointing out exactly what is the reason for a test failure. There's a clock being inverted here, but whereas the clock that has been taken out. There's an additional logic being highlighted here. Right. So this way, it can not only helping you to bucketize your failure, it's also helping you to find out the root cause of failure. Right. It can be signal change, code change, whatever the result causing the test to fail. Right. So this is a uh, screenshot or a, a GUI for the code uh, miners. I mean, it shows the, exactly the number of lines being modified, right? And how much is impact here, severity here. And it also shows the corresponding golden versus your updated RTA code. Yeah. So in summary, as you can see here, this slide talks about I mean, uh, some of the feedback that we have received from our customers and been using it, right? So auto triage, I think people are claiming that they're able to do much more efficient in terms of uh, bucketization and debug, which is almost close to 3x efficiency in terms of overall debug time, right? And uh, similarly, code miner, the range of 1.2 to 3x, 60% x efficiency in terms of debug. Again, these are a lot of data available. The Cadence website, you can go over it. Again, the data what I'm showing is the true data. It's not just only available in the tool, right? People are using it and uh, getting value out of it. So this slide talks about uh, pin down. Again, it's an interesting journey, right? Uh, people, as you can see here, there was around 95 failures, right? And this pin down was able to recognize the source code of it. They were able to find the exactly, if you go back to the change, the test can pass, right? So it took almost six hours to finish all this exercise. But imagine the same bug being debugged by each individual person might have spent easily one week per person per week, right? So, so like 60, 95 weeks versus six hours, can you imagine how much of productivity is right? Huge, I mean, sure, AML can definitely do magic. Some of the areas where we have a lot of data available, it can go back and reiterate and come back to us, right? So I think in summary, I think we believe, I think our technology like Vericium apps, what I've shown you so far, it can definitely bring down your debug time drastically. And it can definitely do a left shift. And we don't need to really have 20 people to debug and one person to fix. It can be one same person can debug and fix it. Right? There's a motivation here. So other duty, I think which is again, very low hanging uh, technology, so typically, let's say you run a regression. Let's say you identify 100 test cases. And some test cases may take 10 minutes, some test cases may take half an hour, some test cases may take two hours. Imagine 20% of your test cases are taking 30 minutes, right? Maybe 60% taking maybe one hour, maybe remaining test cases are taking two hours, right? If you don't really order those test cases, typically you may not really put conscious effort to order them, right? So what happens, it's quite possible that your long test case has been waiting to finish all your short, short test cases, right? So what happens, your end-to-end -end time looks very huge because you're not optimized your uh, LSF use more efficiently, right? But smart run is a very low-hanging technology. It takes your existing regression data and come back to you, okay, I can rearrange these test cases. Let's say you have a two queues or three queues available. Then now I can arrange these test cases to get you a better ROI for you to complete your regression. Right? So it can smartly rearrange your test suit to meet your expectation of 14 days or 16 days instead of 26 days. Right? Sometimes you may say that yeah, these are two test cases need to be run at the beginning. There is no point in running any other test case. You can put that priority to the tool. Right? So it will take that priority as input. You will make sure that test two and four have been run every time at the beginning before launching any other test cases. So this is a uh, Technology is very useful in case you're running into your, uh, in your, uh, in your uh, uh, team and your group, the your management says that, okay, guys, we don't have LSF machines. Use are very limited. We need to be efficient in terms of using. These are technologies that you can propose to them. Right? We don't need to increase the LSF to improve your regression process. So we spoke about simulation, debug, right? Now I'll, I'll touch a little bit on the formal tech domain where we are trying to use of AML here. Again, Jasper is an industry-leading formal technology. We've been using a lot of our customers, right? 
there are a bunch of apps available in the jasper but in terms of aml again as i said right so if i'm rerunning multiple times same properties same design with small changes adding some constraints I, there is a lot of scope for me to re up, optimize the next run right so the technology called proof profiling right so proof caching so what happens here while you running first time you learn understand that, okay what is the property what is the cone of the property what is the constraint that you return right next time you launching the same design i'll take the same cone if the cone is not modified right the property is not modified i can straight away say this is this is fast you don't need to really run the property to the end right so this has been adding a lot of value right to our existing customers and they quickly whatever the one hour time been spent earlier been done within a second, couple of minutes the uh, whole proof Right. Similarly, this is this is within the same execution, but let's say across the designs, if I want to learn, so what happens? Somebody is running uh, uh, DMA block, somebody is running interrupt controller, somebody is running ARM, or maybe arbiter block. Right. So as you know, formal all about using right engine, right algorithm to prove your property. Right? It's quite possible that DMA kind of designs are suitable for some BDD algorithm. maybe you have a lot of control blocks which are suitable for maybe atp algorithm right so the tool can learn what kind of designs you guys are verifying over the time and if i see the similar semantics or uh, usage of the rtl say that you use this engine for this kind of property internally right now what happens next time somebody is starting the new block the whole configuration is already ready for him you don't need to reinvent the wheel again to start from the beginning right so that's where the value here i mean uh, So Pakistan has been helping lot, a lot of our customers, and able to crunch more properties in a quick time and less memory usage, right? So again, deep chip. I don't know how many of you guys follow. A lot of collateral been available. Cadence, Jasper, AI technology been rated number one technology for quite some time back. So again, the, our vision here: uh, try to leverage the data available and uh, bring in. Interact, uh, human into the loop, and wherever we can optimize in terms of improving the overall throughput of formal engine, or improving the more number of proper properties in less time, right? Uh, scalability, we are trying to do that, right? So, so this is a typical uh, life cycle of formal verification, right? We set up a design, right, and uh, start uh, setting the proof. Means you decide uh, which engine to be used, which algorithm to be used, how many properties you want to use, how many constraints that you want to apply, right? Like uh, the way you define test bench and coverage. to define that right then you start running the proof here definitely you have to analyze the coverage here right in case there is a failure you have to go on the but but we are trying to bring in a lot of ai here we call the formal ai uh which is under jasper we are trying to make use of this technology in terms of okay i have a history of certain block been verified can i give you a script automatically for you right can i give you the engine settings to you right can i advocate Certain cover properties for you, right? Or uh, can I advocate certain properties assertion itself for you? Because I have seen the design which is similar to the arbiter. Why don't you use one hot? Why don't you use uh, uh, coverage and some of the control signals? Right? So a lot of automation can be done when you start leveraging AI technology here, right? So you will see here a lot of uh, and we have a event coming up uh, May time frame called Jug Jug India Just for your group. We'll talk about lot more demos, lot more details about. formal ai i want to hold the details right now until that event happens but if somebody is interested want to engage with us please do reach out to me so in summary uh, i think uh, we are taking step towards helping ecosystem to optimize their effort and resource and energy and focus their energy and resource much more area where you really need humans to be involved okay. so debug regression management analysis i think there is a way to automate and there is a definitely way we can work together to automate more right again as said right aml if you make it more generic the roi is will be very less if you make it more specific your designs your programs the roi is much more better right? so we can all learn let's say when we engage with you guys we can always fine tune some of these algorithms to meet your expectations and meet your design you need right? that way you can become more uh, uh, valuable to you using this technology right so with that i think pretty much uh, to the end this slide talks about okay as i said we spoke today primarily around verification but i think cadence as a eda vendor end to end vendor we do have 
bunch of AML technology across the platform. I do recommend you guys to go to Kaden's website and uh, there are a lot of collaterals and uh, app notes, white papers, do download. And there's forums where we discuss about some of the ideas and problems. Do encourage you guys to be part of those forums to share your views and suggestions. Right? And definitely, if you want to engage with us to evaluate some of these features, technologies, happy to work with you guys to engage on this. With that, I think I'll end my presentation. I can take up if you have any questions. Jagdish, did, did I answer your question? You can see that. Thank you. Any, any questions before we go online? So again, there are a lot of collaterals available in our Cadence website. Please do visit there. And if you go to Cadence support site, support.cadence.com, you will have examples, racks, rapid adoption sheets available. You can download and run yourself. Obviously, you need a license. In case we already have license, we can go and play with that. And in case we need a license, we do request us, we can definitely engage with you guys. I'll read out this question. So can you share uh, some papers on use of AI and the, okay, the old one? Okay. How come the Cadence AI tool to be used in DB without the old one? All are old, right? I don't see anything new as well. Yeah, I think no, no questions online as well. So hope I gave you some insights. Uh, hope it was useful for you guys. Uh, but again, it's all we have to work together to make AML better. Right? It's not one-sided. It's like a two clap. I mean, if you want to make a clap, you need to two hands, right? So the customer PDA has to work together to learn because you guys have a lot of designs. You have a lot of uh, technology in terms of advanced nodes, right? But we, we come with a lot of software PDA tools, right? So has to, both of them have to work. If you want to learn, we have to learn on your design. We cannot learn ourselves. Whatever designs we have, maybe a small, tiny example, right? That learning on that may be very minimal. But when you run a live design on you guys, let's say a mobile chief or automotive, a lot to learn, right? So again, we can work towards how much we can take back to factory, how much we have to keep it within the company. But yeah, there's a different ways to engage and collaborate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lokesh, for your insights. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending this uh, session of DV Club. Uh, we have the next DV Club planned for 16th April. It will have an automotive focus. The topic will be how to ensure my design and verification is ISO 26262 to compliant. If you have any colleagues um, or friends who are interested in automotive verification, please let them know. Please spread the word about DV Club to your industry friends and colleagues. This is a small platform, but it is a growing platform, and I'm sure uh, there will be a lot of useful takeaways for each of you from this session. Um, thanks again for your time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next DV Club, and a special thanks to Jagdish and to Lokesh for sharing your insights. Thank you very much.